Hello, this is Evangelist Dr. Robert L. McKim Sr. from Carrollton, Ohio. Well, man. He will not stop. He's still at it again, and you know who I'm talking about. And he sent me another video asking another question. Let me make sure the volume's up. Hi, Bob. My question today is, why does the Bible say that God is not an all-knowing God? In the story of Abraham and Isaac, as they go up to sacrifice, they have a conversation which would lead one to believe that Isaac is familiar with this process. So, as his father terrorizes his son at the command of Yahweh God, an innocent child knows, laying there on the wood, that he's about to have his throat slit and set on fire by his father. And all because God did not know if Abraham would do this, the Bible says. He did not know. So he had Abraham do this to see if he would do it. The God that commanded that is either not an all-knowing God, or it was somebody besides the all-knowing God. So I would like for you to answer that, why that is acceptable behavior, and why is Christianity okay with building a religion on that when Abraham really should have been locked up? That's my question, Bob. Why did God not know? Have a good day. Be blessed. <laughs> oh, good Lord, have mercy. There's nothing in Genesis 22 that says God did not know, or God is not an uh, 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 not an all-knowing all God. It's a story where God tested Abraham. It's in Genesis 22. And it says, Sometime later, God tested Abraham. He said to Abraham, Here I am, he replied. Basically, you know, God said, Abraham. And Abraham said, here I am. God, then God said, take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Mahar, Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on the mountain I will show you. Early the next morning, Abraham got up and loaded his donkey. And he took uh, with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. When he went and had in a cutting of wood... For the burnt offering, he sat out for the place God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the, in, saw the place in the distance. He said to his servants, Stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship and when we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac. And he himself carried the fire because they didn't have matches back down back then or uh, or lighters, so he had to have a fire on a stick basically and a knife. As the two of them went together, Isaac spoke up and said to his father, Father, yes, my son, Abraham replied. The fire and the wood are here, Isaac said, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb 
for the burnt offering, my son, and the two of them went together. When they reached the place God had told him about, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. He bur built, he burned, oh, excuse me, he bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then he reached out his hand and took the knife and to slay his son. But an angel, or the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him, but, I, but, excuse me, now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. Now she says there an angel, instead of God, called out from heaven. Well, see, a lot of people say that the angel that was testing Abraham was actually Jesus Christ, God's son. Abraham looked up, and there in the thicket he saw a ram caught by its horns. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it and burned as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called the place the Lord will provide, and to this day it is said, on the mountain of the Lord it will be provided. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this and have not withheld your son, you your your only son, your only son, I will surely bless you and make you your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the cities of their enemies and through your offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed because you obeyed me. So, first God spoke to Abraham, and then an angel, or God's son, who was an angel at the beginning, Jesus was an angel in the beginning. Jesus was in the beginning with God. Go back in Genesis 1. Let me find it here. Back in Genesis 1. Or was that 2? Wait a minute here. Maybe 2. Genesis 2. Let me find it here again. When uh, no, yeah, it's a one. Okay, hang on, I'm in the wrong one. I was thinking the right one, but in Genesis one twenty six, God said. Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. 
was God talking to himself or his son and the Holy Spirit? Or did God have a split personality? Was God stupid? Was God crazy? Was God nuts or something? No. Because Jesus was there in the beginning with the Father. Jesus was in the beginning and everything was made for Jesus Christ. Because in, uh, I think it was John 1. again here in John 1 it says in the beginning was the word Jesus Christ and the word was with God Jesus Christ was with God and the word was God Jesus was God The same was in the beginning with God. Jesus was with God. All things were made by Him. Without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehend it not. That's King James Version. Jesus was with God the Father in the beginning, and everything was made for Jesus Christ. And the angel that was talking to Abraham was Jesus Christ. So there you have it. Is God all knowing? Yes, God is all knowing. And so is in Jesus Christ. Maybe this is his way of testing me to uh, Renee's stepfather. I don't know, you know. But I think that they should be more concerned about Renee's health. Then, and how Renee is feeling, then concerned about testing me, or trying to disprove the Bible, God's holy word. But that goes to show, you know, what their priorities are. And then again, I don't even know if Renee's mother even knows what the, her husband's doing. Half the time, and if she does, and if she's accepting what he's doing and saying, I feel sorry. Cause he's she, he's leading her down the wrong road. Well, that's all I need to say for now. Just keep us in your prayers. Renee's been asleep since eight thirty nine o'clock. I tried to wake her up a few times. She. You know, asked what time it was and rolled over and went back to sleep. God bless you. Have a blessed day.